Well, happy birthday, guys. Man, I can't believe it. can't believe it. Man, I look at that video, I get chills just watching every time, man. What God has done these last two years is unbelievable. I just want to say a heartfelt thank you from me, from Diane, from our leadership, from real life to you. Thank you for serving. Thank you for making a difference. This morning is going to be a day of encouragement. It's going to be a day of celebration. I believe this. I believe there's people in our community and around the world that thank God for you, for real life, for this church. I believe God is going to show that this morning in so many ways. What you guys have done. We're going to share so many stories. It's a reminder day of why we do real life. Why do we do this? What impact are we making? So this morning, Mass, I want to dive in. Just some encouragement. Man, come on. Let's give it to Jesus one more time before we jump in. Two years. It was just like yesterday, I had like a dream, you know? It's like a dream in our hearts to launch a life-giving church. We had a dream and no money. Come on, somebody. If you're a church player, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's like, man, how are we gonna do this? And it's so amazing what God's done just two years. One little seed planted, and I believe God's beginning to produce a great harvest. He's beginning to do, make a difference through us in so many amazing ways. And this morning, I wanna share with you about that difference and encourage you this morning. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter nine. This is Paul speaking. He says, for, for God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. God gives us everything. Every, everything we produce is from God. He says this in the same way, he'll provide an increase in your resources. And what he'll do, he'll produce a great harvest of generosity inside of you. Yes, he will enrich you in every single way. Why is God going to enrich you? Why is God blessing our church? Why is God using your life and encouraging you? I believe this is so important for us to get today. I believe God is blessing us so we can bless others. He says this, we can, be, we can be generous in every single way. We can always be generous. We can be the church that takes what God gives us and we don't hold it to ourselves. We just have one handful and the other handful we give away. We're gonna make a bigger impact. And I believe God wants us to always be generous. It's so easy to hold on to what God gives us, but this morning we're reminded of why we are generous. We say this at Real Life, we are rashly generous. That means we give up what we we love. We give the things that are comfortable in our life so other people can know Jesus. We truly believe it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. This morning, you're going to hear some stories of encouragement of what your giving has done. Paul goes on to say this. He says, and when we take the gifts to those who need them, when we help out those who need the gifts, what's it say? Somebody help me out. What's it say? People will thank God. People will thank God as we bring people the gifts, as God gives you resources, as God has gifted you with talents, as, as you serve other people, I mean, as you serve here at church, as you invite people, as you pray, all of a sudden people are going to start to thank God because of you. I hope you get this this morning. There are seriously people around the world in our community that thank God for you. So give me, do this for me. Stand to your feet. I need you to fist bump five people and say, people are thanking God for what you do. Come on, fist bump five people. People thank God for what you do. Fist bump them. Don't punch them. Just fist pump them. Fist bump. People are thanking God for what you do. All right, you guys can be seated. Nobody got punched too hard, hopefully, right? I'm just tying a church up here, man. But all the community, people are thanking God for you. People are thanking God for you. We're going to talk about some numbers today. And uh, if you've been around church world at any amount of time, you might run into one of those critics that says, man, it's all about the numbers, all about the numbers, all about the numbers. Well, I hope we realize today there is a book in the Bible called Numbers. Come on, somebody. Numbers are important. You know, if I ask you how many kids you had, if you said, well, I have three to five kids, I might question your ability to parent. You know, we always count what's most important in our lives. For us, every number is a face. Every face is a story. Every story matters to God. Every number is significant. So this morning, we're going to talk about some numbers. We're going to share what God is doing in our church and how you guys are making an impact. I mean, this morning, I want to share four different ways that people are thanking God for our church. The very first way is this, that people are being re receiving the word of God. We're spreading the name of Jesus. It says this in John 1.1. 1, 1. It says, in the beginning was the what? was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This word is Jesus himself. It says in John 1, 14, it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. There is a living word of God. That's what Jesus is called, and he transforms our life. The Bible even says in Hebrews 4, 12 about the actual word of God. It says the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Man, many days ago, a long time ago, I was a freshman in high school. I hung out with the band nerds. Come on, I was the king of the band nerds. I was the drum major, so I did that thing, and they invited me to church, and at church, I I heard about the good news of Jesus through the Bible, through the word that's active and alive. And I heard about the living word. I heard about Jesus and Jesus radically changed my life. When I was 14 years old, I started this journey with Jesus, had no idea what God's going to do in and through my life. And I'm telling you something this morning. I'm so thankful for the people who brought me to church and invited me out to a Wednesday night to hear the name of Jesus. So I got to say thank you to Diane. Come on, give it up for Diane. She invited me. That's a holy hottie. She did it for me. 
She knew this, like, there's going to be a preacher in that boy, and she invited me to church. But uh, I'm, just t- I'm just telling you, that's my wife, by the way, if you don't know who that is. That's weird. Um, but man, I'm just telling you, I'm so thankful for that church. I'm so thankful for people who preach the name of Jesus and love me to the cross. I'm telling you, there's people around the world that thank God for our church. Last year, we had 300, last 12 months, 399 first-time guests come to our church. That is significant. That's absolutely amazing what God's doing. That's people we actually know about. Come on, somebody. I mean, we, that's communication cards. That's not people just came in and left. I'm telling you, God is doing something our community. Community. Here's what's really crazy about our church. We grew 31% this time over last year. One year we've grown 31%. That is absolutely crazy. If you look at church growth charts, 5% is like, that's amazing. 3% isn't even on a chart. What God is doing here is exponential growth. And it's because of what you guys are doing. There's people thanking God for you because you're spreading the name of Jesus. This morning, I want to highlight one story. This one person who's really embodied this idea. And this is a story that's sent in by Mike Vincent. You might recognize Mike. He stands at our worship center doors and he's opening the door for people to receive Jesus and inviting them in. And you'll find him and his wife almost every Sunday inviting somebody out to lunch so he can share Jesus with them, so he can share the Bible with them, encourage them in their faith. He tells stories all the time with some people, witnessing the people as work. This guy has a passion for people. And so this morning, this is just one of the stories, one of so many stories that God is using and writing through you for people are thanking God for you. So why don't you check out this story today? Or no story. My wife and I, My wife and I were blessed to meet Tyson, Christina, Sophia, Chloe, Natalie, and Tuff, the Red Leg Red Bear family at church for the first time just a few months ago. And in our, uh, in our meeting, as they were coming in, uh, we found out that uh, Chloe, their second oldest daughter, had just become a believer just a few months ago. And that was exciting to hear. I uh, have a habit of asking new believers if they have a Bible. And when we found out that she didn't, we asked permission of her parents if we could get one for her. So they, they said we could. So I went to Mardell's, and um, I was looking for a real pretty Bible, and I found a, a very beautiful uh, purple New King James Version, and we had her name inscribed on the front with the scripture reference verse, and we put a dedication on the inside to encourage her. And the following week, we went to Jose Peppers for lunch, and after we ate, we gave her the Bible. And uh, it was interesting that uh, Chloe was wearing a purple shirt, and we found out that purple was actually her favorite color, and she was just very happy and blessed and as we were um in the next few weeks we were praying for uh, uh her their other uh, children sophia and natalie and tough and and god laid it on our heart to uh get sophia a uh, bible as um i believe that she's searching so uh, we got permission from uh tyson and christina and tyson had mentioned we had gotten together over at uh um, some friend's house uh, Vic in Victoria and uh, Tyson had mentioned that yeah his daughter's getting ready to become a woman you know she's going turning from 12 to 13 and uh, so I thought about that when I went to Mardell's and the uh, when I, and I also asked what her favorite color was so I was looking for a blue Bible and we found out that uh, the only blue Bible they had was a woman's study Bible. So, and it was beautiful. So we picked that up, had her name inscribed with a scripture verse, and we put a dedication in the inside for her to encourage her. And uh, we just um, see that the heart for real life church that God has placed there in the leaders and the congregation is to spread the gospel and to uh, serve uh, and, and to encourage each other in love and good works. So, so uh, Chloe is getting baptized. We're exciting to see that happen, and and uh, I, everyone is very blessed. Man, that's encouraging. Give it up for Mike and his story, what Chloe's doing. But I hope you can feel it this morning. And I hope you can feel it. I know that's like, man, that's just one story. And uh, Mike, I appreciate you taking time. Just something so simple. Even a smile can make a difference. But taking the time to bring somebody to lunch and sharing the good news of Jesus, bringing them a Bible. And, you know, he called me after lunch that day and said, hey, Chloe wants to get baptized. Chloe got baptized. The third person baptized this morning. Man, so encouraging what God is doing. Come on, get up for Chloe. You can do that. I won't stop that. I won't stop an applause for people. 
And she's just one of 399 people that visit our church. Just one story. That's just one little story, but God is using that to change people's lives. People are thanking God for you this morning. I hope you're going to feel this morning what God is doing. We, we believe this about the word of God. We were called to spread the word of God to people. Here's the problem in our community. There's 60,000 people who don't call Jesus their Lord and Savior. 60,000 people who never darken the door of church. Our church exists for the 60,000 people. That's a large problem. I believe God has called us, this church, planted here to be a life-giving church to reach people far from Jesus so they can know and experience life in him. We're called to be a life-giving church. Here's what's really cool. God grew our church this last year by 75 people in weekly attendance. I mean, we're two years old. That is an incredible number. 75 people, 30% of our church has grown and, and became a part of our church. People knowing Jesus. We baptized 11% of our church in the last 12 months. That's absolutely incredible. God is doing something significant in and through you. You may not feel that way, but I'm telling you, God is using what you do when you serve here, when you pray, when you give, when you invite somebody, God is doing something in in three. I believe God is, people are thanking God for you because you're spreading his word and all that because you're equipping churches. You may not know this behind the scenes, we do so much stuff with equipping other churches. The Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 4, 11. He says, now these are the gifts that Christ gave to the church. He gave some apostles, he gave some evangelists, he gave some, some prophets, some shepherds and some teachers. The Bible says this, that you all have one of this, one or two of these gifts. You're all gifted with one of these five things. Some of you guys are apostles and you're gonna be a pioneer. You're like a church planner. This, this is why it's like Paul. You're gonna go out and like take some ground from the devil, and some of you guys have that gift. Some of you guys have the gift of prophecy, and this is nothing weird. It's a gift of discernment, the gift of wisdom. You're the kind of person that saw it coming, right? Like, that person, yep, told you so. Uh, I, that was me this week, by the way. I rented a two-man auger. I just got to tell this story. Um, I was putting some peers in. You know, it's a good YouTube story, okay? And also, I'm putting some peers in the shed I was building, and, uh, and I wanted a single-man auger, and it, it didn't come as a single man because it was sold out, so I'll get the double man. It's a two-man. So I called Diane, and uh, she's like, hey, we're going to see if you're twice the man as you try to do this by yourself. And so I was like, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm going to prove you, like, right? Well, about 10 seconds in that thing, it is whipping me and beating me to pieces. And so I can't get this thing to shut off. It's throwing around in circles. It, I've got bruises all over my arms and my legs. I mean, you're lucky I even baptized people this morning. It's a great story. And I couldn't get the thing to shut off. It's spinning around me. This is just going loopy doop, you know, right? I'm, I'm like, man, I'm a fool. So I finally get this thing turned off. And uh, I was like, man, I'm like half the man. I'm not twice the man. I'm half the man. So uh, we had a lot of fun with that. But I'm telling you, uh, some, of you some of you guys have the gift, the gift of wisdom going, that's a dumb idea. That's a bit of prophecy. Some of you guys have the gift of evangelism. Some of you guys just go out there and naturally want to share Jesus. It's just a gift and a calling in your life. And maybe, Mike, that's your gift, right? Some of you guys have the gift of shepherding, gift of care and oversight for the church, loving on people. People are sick, people are hurting, you're there for them. That's where you, that's your gifted. Some of you guys are gifted teachers. You discern the things of God. You're able to, to break apart the word and correctly divide the truth and, and share that with people in a gifted way. You're all gifted with one of these gifts. And God has given you that gift on a purpose. And the purpose is this. It says to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the church. You're gifted to build the church, the capital C church. You're gifted to make a difference in people's lives. I want you to know this. We launched this church, Real Life Church, on September 17th, 2017. We launched with 36 other churches in the United States that very same day. One of those churches was here in Kansas City in Prairie Village. I'm just telling you, church planting and equipping churches is in our DNA. We know what it's like to have a dream and a vision with nothing. And so this morning, I want to tell you that you guys are making a difference. People believe in us a all long way, this church. We're not standing on our own shoulders. We're standing on the shoulders of the people gone in front of us. There's a group of churches in Kansas City called New Thing. They're a coalition of churches, a group of churches that just want to reach Kansas City for Jesus. They have a goal of planting 1,000 churches in Kansas City. They, they helped us out as we launched. There's a group called Association of Related Churches. I mean, they backed us, supported us, trained us, and encouraged us. They've supported us all along the way. Some of you guys know Church of Four Corners or Craig, Pastor Craig Cackley. Man, so loved us, supported us. We would not be here with with men like that. Restore Community Church. You know, Pastor, Pastor Troy. I mean, this has a heart for church playing, changing the cities. I mean, Summit Park. I mean, talk about uh, Pastor, Pastor Scott Obrimsky. Man, what an incredible heart for God. We show up and he goes, hey, you want these lighting stands? Well, these lighting stands just gave them to us, right? Like, okay, cool. We, we're church planners, bro. We take everything for free, right? Uh, front Range out in, the, in Colorado. Man, Pastor Ernest, man, just coaching us and cared for us. I mean, this very stage we stand on is from Abundant Life, okay? We're, we're standing literally on somebody else's shoulders, all right? Abundant Life is believed in us. And so for us, we're going to give back. That's who we are. That's our DNA because, you know, we're not going to forget the little guy. We're not going to forget the little guy has got a vision in their heart to, to reach people for Christ because we are convinced that new churches reach new people. Absolutely convinced. 
that life-giving churches need to be planted in every community in the world, and God is going to use that to reach people. We gave $30,000 since we launched to church planting here and across the world. You have no idea, seriously, no idea how many pastors and how many churches have been blessed because of your guys' giving. So this morning, I want to share just one story, just one pastor. He actually planted here in Kansas City, up on um, in my home turf in Raytown, uh, right there off of 87th and Blue Ridge. He planted a church, uh, just a life-giving church just recently, just over the last few months, and God is using that church to do incredible things. I want you to hear the story of your impact because people are thanking God for you in in our city that are coming to Christ because of you. So check out the story of Pastor Price. Good morning. Good morning, Real Life Church. This is Pastor Price with New City Church, Loma Vista. And I just wanted to send you a celebration message saying congratulations. Happy second birthday. Um, it's wonderful to be a part and connected to you all through Pastor Sean. We are a part of the New Thing Network, which is a, a cohort of pastors that come together with the heart of church planning. And because of your generosity to New Thing, uh, our church in the urban core, and Loma Vista has been able to be a blessing to the people of Loma Vista and to the greater Kansas City area. We've launched five months ago, and I mean, it has been tremendous. Just two weeks ago, there was a church merger that came together with us, which is unheard of. And that's all because of the generosity of, of, of believers like you from the Real Life Church. So thank you so much for joining, joining us and partnering with us in this effort. But more importantly, congratulations and happy second birthday. Have a good one. Man, we love this guy. Come on, give it a Pastor Price. That guy wants to bring his leadership out and his team to one of our heart and souls. I mean, this guy has a passion for God. He's actually fourth level uh, church plant in our city. Like seriously, the new thing, he planted a church, he planted a church, he planted a church, he planted his church in Kansas City. In my backyard, I, my mom, my, she's here today. Mom, there's, wave mom. There she, there she is. I love you, babe. <laughs> what are you going to do? I almost called her babe because I, I do that nowadays. When, when you have kids, your mind just goes crazy. But she, you live like two minutes away from this church, and it's crazy. I was like, man, you've got to reach this city for Jesus, bro. Like, I grew up right there, man. They need a life-giving church. I'm so encouraged by what he's doing. They've actually merged up with another church already. They said, man, you're doing such a great job. And I'm telling you, God's just doing something in the city. New, new Thing has planted 18 churches since we launched here in Kansas City. 18 life-giving churches in our city. That's a boom, mind-blown, right? And there's so many people that are coming to Christ because you guys play a part of that story. Since we've launched, ARC and New Thing Together have planted over 110 churches. That's insane. They're planting 110 churches. Matter of fact, ARC is planting 28 churches this month around the United States. Absolutely crazy. We play a part of that. When you guys give here, when you guys pray, you're making a difference in people's lives around the world. People are thanking God because you are equipping churches outside even us. Other people that are far from God are experiencing Jesus that we would never reach because you guys sacrifice and give here. You know, I believe this. You're also people thanking God because you're meeting other people's needs. And our strategy on this is really simple. We partner with gifted, talented, God called people and to partner with them to reach people around the world. We're not going to reinvent the wheel because we believe we can do infinitely more together than apart. And so we have partnered with people across the world. The Bible says this in Romans 12, 13. He says, we are called to share with the Lord's people who are in need. Globally, we partner with different people who have, have given micro loans, people who help children out of poverty and rescue them uh, from slavery and different things. We partner uh, with, with organizations for relief and restoration for hurricanes. Uh, one of these organizations I'm going to highlight this morning is Vapor Ministries. Vapor Ministries is close to my heart. We have sponsored a kid through them for eight years. Uh, you guys give here. You guys serve here. You make a difference in this ministry. Every single month, we partner with them in, in so many different ways. I want you to check out what they're doing. Uh, they go into a centers. They, they're gospel-centered, humanitarian uh, centers they create across the world. They plant them in slums. They plant them in, in, the, in the poorest of the poor. Literally, where you would take the garbage truck and dump it, that is where they're reaching people for Christ across the world. I've seen these slums firsthand in Kalamgwari and Gashagi and, and Togo and Haiti. There's different different places that they're planting. And what they do is they put a well in, they, they dig a well and they start giving out clean water, over a million liters of water a year. They have over 340 kids that are getting higher education. We sponsored a kid eight years ago named Newton that is learning and has education and can read and write because we give to that. I'm telling you, they make a gospel difference. They have 5,500 students every, or teens every single week that go through practices and get discipled, they get uh, nutrition care. I'm telling you, you make a difference in their lives. I promise there's people around the world that are thanking God for you. You may never see it. You may never know it exists, but two years in, there's people around here, if they could come here today, they would say, thank you so much for what you're doing. This morning, I want to encourage you with another video. This is uh, from our own missionaries, Jared and Rose. We sent them out to this year, and they're going to share a story of what God is doing there, just the small seeds being planted. They're making a big difference. Check out this video. For example, I, for example, I was on a video shoot interviewing a lady who had just been healed physically with a personal condition that outcast her from her husband and the rest of the community. 
The lady I was interviewing spoke Hausa, the language, and I don't know Hausa. <laughs> and so there was someone there that knew Hausa and also knew French, but I don't know French either. So there was someone that knew French that translated into English. Plus by the time I had to go and edit the video, I had no idea where to start. So I sent just the audio to someone who could translate it again and cut it into a story, put it into a good form because there's a lot of repetition going on. And for the first time, a month later, I'm understanding the power of the story and what this lady is saying. In short, the lady was healed and in a majority Muslim nation, she started to realize God's love for her and that he loved her just as she was, no matter what, and that God has a purpose for her. So I just wonder how many seeds have been planted and how many doors have been opened or how many doors will be opened. So I just can't wait to look back at this year and see how God has impacted my life and others because of this year. And I also can't wait to look back and see how God impacts you and others at real life because of this year. Even though it might not feel effective, it might very much be effective. Love you guys. It's starting to rain here, so I gotta pack up. <laughs> Man, you gotta love Jared. Give it up for Jared and Rose. Man. This guy cracks me up. He shoots a better video in the middle of Africa without power than we can shoot here at our church. I love this guy. Man, they're making a difference. I promise you, there's people in huts, there's people in, in just in hospitals called the cure, in rooms that are being ministered to because you guys give and we've sent people out and care for people that are thanking God because of you. We don't just thank God. People are thanking God just across the globe. People thank God in our community. We partner with so many different organizations. We partner with Heart and Hand and, and we partnered last night. We partnered with the, the, Bel the Belton Parks and Rec with, uh, with Melissa Ferrari. And you know, when we just made a commitment, we're say yes to our community. When somebody needs something, we'll say, hey, sign me up. We'll be there. And so we're not a church just in the community. We're a church for the community. You'll find us at so many different events and so many different things throughout the year. And I will say thank you if you serve on those teams. You're making a difference. You don't know what it's like. When somebody doesn't know Jesus, we show up. We might be the only church at the event. We put our flags. Last night, we were doing sack races, and I feel like an old man getting beat up, you know, running down the thing. And I'm just telling you, pe people are experiencing the love of Jesus. We don't need to tell them the gospel, but we're there just to love on the community. Let them know we're for them. We care for them. We had so many great conversations. We do this week in and week out. We have, we have different outreaches all throughout the year. Uh, we had a couple videos for them, but they're sideways. So we're not going to see that today unless you're going to watch them upside down. Um, but man, sorry about that. That's my fault. But man, it's encouraging what God is doing in our community, not just around the world, not just locally, but in, in just spreading the gospel. We're seeing lives changed. Now, there's so many people that can say that I met Jesus this year. Like I was far from God, I didn't have hope, I didn't have a purpose, but I met Jesus. I wanna share one of those stories this morning. Matter of fact, as somebody who got baptized today, a story that really, I think, really ex exuberates or, or personifies what God is doing in our church, that there's people that show up and need the hope of Jesus. If you're like me, I grew up, man, I thought all together, but I didn't have it all together because I met Jesus, I realized, man, I'm a sinner in need of a savior, and God is changing people's lives every single week in our church. Last week, we had three people come to Christ here in our gatherings. I wanna share with you a story that's happening in our youth ministry of this last few months, God's doing something incredibly cool. Check it out. This is Carrie Cubley. God is on the move in real life youth. Our mission is to see students who are far from God discover real life and purpose in Jesus. And over these past three months, we've been able to see just that. We've had five students who have started a relationship with Jesus over these past couple of months. And one of those students is Mackenzie Voorhees. Uh, she let me know that after a few um, months of some personal struggles and a death in the family, she decided she wanted to get back into church. And as a result of coming to Real Life Youth, decided to start a relationship with Jesus. She told me that she's so excited to share her story with other people um, in the hopes that maybe they would be able to, to start a relationship on their own with him and to learn about the Savior that she knows. She also told me that she's absolutely excited to share her faith by getting baptized this morning. We are so excited to share in this with her, and I am so beyond excited to see what God does in and through her life. Man, give it up for them. Man, I want to encourage you. I mean, you, you are making a difference every time you pray, every time you serve, every time you invite somebody, I man, every time you come here with somebody new, you're making a difference. The gospel's being spread. We're equipping churches. Man, people are needs are being met. You don't realize the difference. I mean, I hope you feel the difference today. You see all the people being impacted, just story after story after story. Hey, the four he's over here. Man, I, I, we're thanking God with you. Man, how incredible that both your kids right here just got baptized. McKinsey accepted Christ. Man, give, these are the faces of life change. Come on, somebody. How encouraging. And that's why we do it. 
We planted this church just for you. If you're the only two, we did it for you. We want God to make a difference in your life. Man, we believe in big stuff for you. Caleb, I'm, I'm telling you, man, God's got a call in your life. Man, it's significant. You may not feel it every day. You don't know you're making an impact when you're standing up for Jesus, but you're standing up for Jesus, and you know what? There's lives being changed. It's hard to measure. So they were measuring that. This is our measuring stick, people coming to Christ. I'm just telling you, just like the Bible said, when God gives you a gift, when God's blessing you, when you have a harvest, he's not doing it to, to make you have more. He's doing it because he wants you to always be generous. He wants you to give back to somebody else. He wants you to make a difference. He wants you to take what you've got and say, you know what? I don't have a whole lot, but you know what? I've got Jesus. I've got Jesus, man, I got some good news for you. I mean, here's the Bible, I'd love to pray with you. I man, God's a plan for your life, God loves you. I man, we get to pour into somebody else, we get to equip churches. I, mean, I love when somebody's got a passion to reach people. I man, we're gonna send them out, so I mean, there's a group of people that God has called you to. I mean, 110 churches planted through some of your giving, that's incredible, you don't realize the difference you're making. That, those churches together give her $15 million to missions every year. That's incredible, we play just a small part of the story of God, just an honor to do that. I'm telling you, we meet people's needs, not just here and around the world, there's kids in Africa in huts that have no shoes that run around I mean literally trash streets with sewage they are thanking Jesus because you guys give here because you guys pray because you guys are faithful there's people in our community that have received Jesus there's so many stories just like Caleb just like McKinsey that accepted Christ in our church every week I don't think you realize the goodness of God I don't think you realize the goodness of God people coming to Christ every single week I'm just gonna say this on behalf of everybody that couldn't say thank you for themselves on behalf of all the people that filled these chairs all last year to our setup team, I just wanna say thank you for doing it. Thank you for setting up and tearing down. Thank you to all those from the kids in Africa, the kids in Haiti that run through the streets, live in huts, or they're in this life that only maybe lived 32 years, they're drastically changed by the gospel, they have clean water. I just wanna say thank you to the kids in the, in the Real Life Kids Ministry, men that had all their butts white for Jesus, come on, somebody in the nursery. I'm just telling you, they say thank you. Man, to everybody in our community, they got a smile and a sucker and a hand.